Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a problem involving calculating a gravity, let's see, an example problem for calculating gravitational potential energy, and we are going to calculate the gravitational potential energy of this thing, that International Space Station, as it orbits around the Earth, as it orbits the Earth, and in the previous video, I calculated the gravitational potential energy of an object at the surface of the Earth, and in the next video, we will calculate a problem, we'll do a problem involving the change in the potential energy of an object as it is launched from the surface of the Earth into space. But this is the International Space Station, and it orbits the Earth at approximately 405 kilometers. It has a somewhat eccentric orbit, but we're going to say that it's a circular orbit, and that is the height above the surface of the Earth. And it has a mass of 419,455 kilograms. And we're going to use this equation that the potential energy is equal to minus g times m1 times m2 divided by r to calculate its gravitational potential energy as it orbits the Earth. Now, I'm going to say something at the end when we actually calculate the value why we have a negative sign here. This negative sign is important. Don't forget about the negative sign. I think it often gets overlooked, and we'll talk about what the negative sign means at the end. Okay, so let's go. G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared kilogram squared. M1 is the mass of the Earth in kilograms. M2 is the mass of the space station in kilograms. And what is R? R is the radius. It's a circular orbit, and that radius is measured. R is measured from the center of the Earth, not just the height. So we have to take the radius of the Earth plus the height, and that gives us the total distance for R. And in this case, the radius of the Earth is, or in mostly all cases, the radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers. The height above the Earth's surface for the space station is 405 kilometers. We add that together, and we get the value for R is 6,776 kilometers. Okay? We just plug the values in. The potential energy is the, what's that thing called? The gravitational potential, no, the gravitational constant. I'm not using the units because I don't have some room here, but I'll say something in a moment. These are the mass of the Earth. This is the mass of the space station, and this is R. Masses have to be given in kilograms, which they usually are, because the unit uh, in the constant has kilograms in it. And the, the thing you have to remember is really you have to convert the distance to meters, because, the once again, the constant has the units of meters, oftentimes the distances are given in kilometers, so I just took the whole thing, 6,776 times 10 to the third, that would be meters. Sometimes you'll see people will convert this to like 6.78 or whatever, 6 point something, and then they'll put times 10 to the sixth here. Obviously, that's also true also. But I left it 1,000, and then times 10 to the third will give me meters. Just do all of that math, multiply, 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 divide, and you get that the potential energy is minus, don't forget the minus sign, 2.47 times 10 to the 13th joules. Okay, that's the value right there. That's all there is to it. Now, I do want to say quickly something about why we have a negative sign here. Before I say why, why we have a negative sign here, um, I want to say that what the negative sign does not mean, and the negative sign does not mean that the potential energy is less than zero, okay? Potential energy, it's, it's a negative sign. The negative sign really designates that the object is still bound to the Earth, okay? This is a graph. This is kind of a graph you often see when we talk about gravitational potential energy for objects in space. This is, an Earth, this is the Earth, and this is the potential energy. This is the distance away from Earth, from the center of the Earth. And this is the graph of the potential energy, and this is the zero, zero point. This is the origin of the graph, so this is positive and this is negative. So all the values for the potential energy are going to be negative. So this is really the amount, and this is the sign. The sign means that it's still bound to the Earth, and you can see as you get farther away from the Earth, as you get farther, from the, the, this is the graph of the potential energy, you can see that it approaches zero. Well, when is the potential energy zero between two objects? In this case, for gravitational potential energy, the potential energy is zero is when the object is infinitely far away from the Earth. When the object is infinitely far away from the Earth, then the potential energy is zero, okay? And that is the way that works, and that's why that negative sign is here. Now, the negative sign also means that, let's just say we wanted to remove the object completely from the influence, the gravitational influence of the Earth, we want that means we want to give it potential energy of zero. That means we have to move it infinitely far away. Well, what would we have to do? We have to give it energy. We have to move it away, and we have to give it the kind of the equivalent amount of energy because when we add those two up, then we get zero. And when is it zero? When the zero, the energy is zero is when it's infinitely far away. Okay, so you can think of it a kind of a couple different ways. It's the, it means that the it's bound to the Earth. 
And you got to give it that much energy to move it away from the Earth so that it no longer feels the gravitational influence of Earth, which is at infinity. Okay? That's how we designate kind of where the potential energy is zero. All right, so I think that's all I wanted to say. We calculated the value. We talked about what the negative sign means. And like I said, in the next video, we'll talk about changes in potential energy, which is really the most important thing. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. One, two, three, four. Please subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, you can give me a thumbs up for this video. That helps me out a lot. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And also don't forget that sharing is caring. Show your friends that you care about them and the rest of the world and share this video with them. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.